Today I want to talk about this a little bit, the EP Ever Ebox Wi-Fi 01, which I've been using here in the shed uh, successfully for over a year now. Now this device connects to uh, my EP Ever Tracer charge controller through an uh, RJ45 connection and uh, effectively it allows me to remotely monitor the tracer from my PC and this connects to my Wi-Fi network here at home but that's only because I found a backdoor, I got access to the uh, graphical user interface and I was able to change this from access point mode to station mode. So unfortunately in access point mode you lose your connection to the internet because you have to connect your computer directly to the e-box. So you can monitor your solar charge controller but you can't really do anything else with your laptop. So then you disconnect, connect to your normal network again and you lose access to the, uh, the solar charge controller. So that's a bit of a shame. So when I found that this could be changed into station mode, I was pretty pleased. That means I could connect it as a station to my normal Wi-Fi home network, and therefore uh, I could interrogate it and check out the stats on my uh, Tracer A charge controller without disconnecting from the internet or anything else. So that was brilliant. Sadly, EP Solar and EP Ever decided to remove the functionality of station mode in the Ebox e Wi-Fi 01 when they updated the uh, software, so you can't do that anymore. And worse than that, they actually broke it so that if you uh, change it into uh, station mode, it breaks the whole device and it doesn't work anymore. Not even the reload button, it doesn't fix it. There are some instructions, however, on how to fix it. EP Ever did release some instructions and I will link to those in the uh, description below. So if you've bought one of these, you've tried my method of changing the mode and it hasn't worked and it's broken your Wi-Fi 01, well, there are instructions below to help fix it. So today I want to look at some alternatives to this product, but first of all, Let's uh, clarify a few things about this device. First of all, the price. It costs about £15. What's that these days? 18 to 20 US dollars on eBay. That's about the cheapest place I found it. And uh, it uses pretty low power and it's powered directly across the RJ45 port here. Um, it uses 5 volts directly from the solar charge controller and it uses pretty low power, something like 70 to 95 milliamps while it's operating. Of course it also works out of the box. It's designed to work with your EP Ever or EP Solar solar charge controller. So it works straight away out of the box and of course you get the EP Ever customer service if it doesn't work. EP Ever also have an Android app which connects directly to the eBox which is quite nice and uh, none of the other solutions that I'm going to show today have that functionality. The next one to look at is this RS485 to Wi-Fi adapter here. It's a USR Wi-Fi 232604 and this is a V2. I don't know if that makes a great deal of difference. But this is simply an RS485 to Wi-Fi adapter because the protocol, the RS485 that EP ever use is a, an industrial standard. RS485 has been used for many years in the industry so there's a number of these different modules about and uh, as you can see here on the end this three pin connection here you've got terminal posts for your wires you've got the rs485 a b and there's also a ground connection there as well and this one happens to run on five volts which is quite good so there is a connector there um, or you can use the uh, 2.1 5.5 mil jack and that sounds quite nice because the uh, solar charge controllers output 5 volts on their uh, RJ45 connection um, so you could potentially connect this straight to your uh, solar charge controller and uh, have no additional wires. The issue with that though is uh, on the bottom here it does mention it needs up to 500 milliamps and when I've tested this uh, indeed uh, 160 milliamps at rest or thereabouts uh, but it did peak up to about 450 milliamps while I was uh, communicating with this and uh, adjusting the settings in the web page which it loads. 
This comes with a uh, sort of antenna here, which can be uh, connected, and uh, that web GUI actually is quite easy to use. Within a few minutes, you can have this configured and set up uh, to communicate with your solar charge controller. And uh, I have to give it top marks for that. It was really quite simple. There's in fact a quick start guide and that got me up and running straight away. It is, however, about twice the cost of the eBox Wi-Fi. This cost me about £30. What's that? Nearly forty US dollars. And the fact that it pulls up to 450 milliamps um, on that DC input means the uh, solar charge controller can't power it so you would need external power to this and unfortunately uh, that means it loses a couple of points. And here's another option very much like the last but this one has a few extra options and I thought this would be really interesting. The DTU H100 has uh, the RS485 connector there, just the A and B on this one. It also does RS232 on there as well, so potentially this could be useful for other charge controllers that have uh, that connection on those. This also has a DC input between 5 and 18 volts, and I thought that would be really useful because it means you can uh, power it straight from a 12 volt lead acid battery system and you don't need to worry about overloading the uh, the communication port on your solar charge controller and finally even though it has got wi-fi and there's the antenna it also has a standard 100 megabit um, rj45 network connection on there so this could be wired as well as wireless so i thought this was going to be a really good option even though this has a lot of potential i'm afraid i can't recommend it because the uh, the web gui to configure it is almost unfathomable it's very difficult to work out all the various different settings to get it working and unfortunately the uh, reload button on here doesn't work either much like the Wi-Fi Zero One. Um, in the end I ended up having to uh, take this apart, remove the Wi-Fi module and the microcontroller here, power it separately away from this communications daughter board on the outside here and reset it by shorting a couple of pins um, and then I was able to try and set up the software again but then it failed again and I had to take it all apart again it was a bit of a nightmare so sadly I can't recommend the uh, DTU H100 and the last option here is in a 3d printed box because it's, well, it's a shed-made solution. I've actually uh, used Colin Hickey's design here of um, some standard modules. This is a standard RS485 to TTL um, adapter here. There's an uh, ESP8266 and a little module here, a 33 volt AMS1117 uh, regulator on there. And uh, this works really nicely if I can get it out of its uh, little case and in fact I contacted Colin and said I was really impressed with this little design and uh, I decided to uh, design a PCB for it. It's fairly straightforward and simple but um, designing a PCB for it does indeed make it a lot easier to put together. Now, in the video description below, there will be a link to a blog post that explains um, how Colin put these various different modules together and why I bothered to uh, create a PCB. I'll make sure there's links to the Gerber file for this PCB in that blog post as well. Now, comparing this one again to the others we've seen, well, it's pretty low power, about 125 milliamps. It can be connected directly to the uh, solar charge controller, 125 milliamps at 5 volts, and obviously we use that regulator to uh, bring it down to 3.3 volts here for the ESP8266. The ESP Link software loaded onto this uh, ESP8266 is really easy to configure um, and connect to your local network. This one will work in both access point and station mode, but you will need to flash your ESP8266. And I use this little flashing module here, which is dead simple. And uh, Colin's done a good video on how to load the software onto the ESP8266. 
and of course that will be in the uh, description below. But to be honest, the whole flashing process and the configuring it for your local network can be done in about 5 or 10 minutes. So there we have it. You can buy different RS485 to Wi-Fi adapters, but actually I don't think you should. I think you should make one yourself. I think this one trumps the lot of them. It uses only slightly more power than the Ebox Wi-Fi 01, but it can be used in both station mode and client mode. These other generic uh, solutions here, well, the cost of them is probably at least six times more than the homemade adapter. And I had all sorts of trouble with them out of the box. Just because I bought a commercial product doesn't make it any easier to configure and use. So, all in all, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. This is the solution for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.